And today is what now, Greg? Tell me what today is. So today is Amateur Radio Field Day. It's a, an event that encompasses all of North America, meaning Canada and the U.S., and it's always the fourth full weekend in June. And the idea behind Field Day is to set your station up in a more austere environment than the comfort of your home and demonstrate to the public how you can serve the community by being able to set up a station quickly and operate. So the point of today is these guys behind us here are trying to make contacts all across the U.S. right now. Um, and so I know that they've contacted uh, California and Colorado. And earlier today we heard a station in Croatia. We couldn't contact him. Our signal wasn't strong enough like his was. But the whole idea is just to see, you know, where can we reach with our humble setup here. Right. Now that's not the goal of our, our group here because we exist primarily to serve Warren County and Front Royal. So the need to contact Colorado is not a daily need. But the idea is if normal, emergency, normal or emergency communications is degraded or destroyed in Warren County, we can operate on behalf of them. We can use our radios uh, to communicate all across Warren County. If we needed to get an emergency message from the county down to the Virginia Department of Emergency Management in Richmond, not a big deal. We can send a message right down there. All right. So you are Greg Butler. Now, what's your role? Well, I people like to call me the leader of this group. I kind of call myself the choreographer. I don't. I don't want to like got boss people around and tell them what to do. But I do kind of coordinate our efforts for the county. So I'm like the primary liaison to the fire department to whom we report. Okay. So, so you guys are official county communicators. We are. Um, every one of our members has to be licensed by the FCC with an amateur radio license. And then they have to express an interest in joining the group because they're interested in public service. And so they have to fill out a formal application with the county fire department, go through a fingerprint-based background check. Uh, we also have to do some uh, take a class in criminal justice so that we can uh, move in and out of the uh, emergency operations center and the dispatch where there's criminal justice information displayed on computer screens. So under the threat of, you know, don't say anything about what you see in here or you're going to get arrested. No use in ignorance. For that, that's right. So there's no excuse for it. So, and we're just happy that the county is, you know, trusts us enough to give us that kind of privilege. And we try to reciprocate by, by being ready for them. And so to prepare to make sure that things work the way they need to, we go into the public safety building, into the emergency operations center every Wednesday morning test the radios, make sure they're working properly. And then we also have a radio station at the hospital. And so we go over there on Wednesday afternoons to make sure the station's working from there. We have a, the station behind us here is a portable station. We have a permanent station in the emergency operations center, but the county can choose to deploy us basically anywhere with this box. So we have a permanent antenna at Warren County Middle School, which could be used as a shelter in terrible weather. We can take this over there, connect up pretty quickly, and be in operation. We can also take this go box over to the Front Royal Police Station, where they, we also have a permanent antenna, being on the air in about 10 minutes, so if they lost like phone connection between the two buildings, we could communicate between the police and the sheriff's office. So let's see you drop here and tell us what's going on over here with these gentlemen. Why don't you go ahead and introduce them? Well, this is Tom. KR4DO is his amateur radio call sign. This is Sam, who's uh, KQ4RIV is his call sign. And because today is a contest, technically speaking, they're trying to contact other stations around the country. So right now they're looking around on the HF bands. So like right now they're on 14 megahertz and they're looking for other stations that are doing this same thing today and they're gonna try and make contact with them. Sam will be doing a log of those contacts so that we have proof that we made those contacts. Right. So, so how many people in this organization? We have about 15 or 16 on our active roster. Not everybody's retired like me, so some people have real jobs. So like if the county had something happen at two o'clock on Tuesday afternoon, we could probably activate two or three people right away. And then we'd have like a 12 hour shift where we could figure out, okay, who can come in and spell us overnight if that was the need. Right. So what about the, you know, years ago, amateur radio was really a big thing. And you don't hear much about it anymore. Cell phones. Everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody's got a cell phone because you can talk to anywhere in the world. 
from this little tiny radio in your pocket, right? right. Until the cell system goes down. And right. the cellular system depends on a lot of towers all over the place. So, you know, if the weather takes a tower down or an extended power outage, uh, uh, or, a, or a big event, you know, we had the earthquake uh, years ago down in uh, South Central Virginia, and it took down the 911 system in DC because so many people were on the on their phones trying to figure out what was going on. So the, the thing is, on amateur radio, we've got some very specific specific frequencies that we're allowed to use that other people are not allowed to use. So we and we don't re rely on all that infrastructure like the cell towers. So we can do our communications that way. And there's a lot of different kind of amateur radio equipment and, like you say, different frequencies that require different. They go different. They go farther or less, depending on. Yes, depending on which frequencies we use. Some are more suited for local communication. Others are more suited for uh, long distance or regional communication. Okay. We have. We have. The FCC has given amateur radio operators segments of the radio spectrum, like below uh, below AM radio, right. above and below FM radio, above and below CB radio. Um, and we can use a variety of those based on the atmospheric conditions and the goal of what we're trying to accomplish. So conditions are right, you could literally go around the world. We could. In fact, there's a phenomenon that happens. I haven't had it happen to me specifically, but if the conditions are just right, because HF frequencies, they take off from your antenna and they go hit the ionosphere and then it bounces it back down to the Earth. Well, if conditions are just right, it can bounce Earth to atmosphere, Earth to atmosphere, and like a few seconds after you talk on the radio, you might actually hear your own voice back at your station. It's it's a unique phenomenon. Like I said, I haven't heard it. But. Okay, let's see if we get some young people or older people that are interested. How do they get hold of you? Well, we have a, uh, a Facebook page called Warren County MCOM. They could message us through the page. Um, and if they were to contact um, the fire department, the fire department could okay. put them directly in touch with me, okay. and uh, I'd be happy to talk to anybody. So you're always looking for new members. <laughs> Excuse me. Always, always. 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 Yeah, we want to make sure that somebody's actually interested, but people can be interested in amateur radio without needing to be a part of our group. Right. Because there's plenty of things that you can do on amateur radio outside of emergency communications. Mm -hmm. well, Greg, I appreciate it and all the work that you guys are doing. Your uh, crew over here really looks uh, intense. <laughs> they are uh, concentrating, trying to make good contacts. Yeah, yeah. I heard they're, they're doing so. Yeah, that's great. So it makes it it makes it worth coming out in this heat worthwhile. Yeah, it's so, a nice warm day. Yeah, thank you, Mike, for right, enduring the heat to I talk to us. I appreciate you talking to us. Thank you. All right, thanks.